So today we're going to look at um, the Bernoulli principle and equation and just kind of talk a little bit more about the concepts of this. Um, so here's our equation. Remember, this is just conservation of energy. Um, if you look at our terms here, this represents our work. This represents our potential energy. This represents our kinetic energy. So essentially we're saying um, however much energy we start with has to equal however much energy we end with, work plus potential plus kinetic. Um, another way we can simply write this is just saying, oh, this is gonna equal a constant. This is gonna stay constant throughout. So one of the big questions or concepts that's often asked is uh, if velocity increases, what happens to the pressure? pressure blank. So if the velocity increases, what's going to happen to the pressure? Well, mathematically, hopefully you can see, um, you know, the answer is pretty clear. Uh, let's assume the height's going to be the same here. If the um, velocity goes up, then in order to maintain this constant, our velocity goes up, our pressure is going to go down. Now this is kind of counterintuitive. Let's just look at it maybe uh, in a picture. Maybe this will make more sense. So if we draw out a pipe, for example, uh, and we have kind of our flow, fluid flow going through it, hopefully you remember that uh, as this area decreases, the velocity has to go up. So this would be a region of high velocity. This would be a region of low velocity, right? Well, for that to happen, there needs to be a pressure on both sides, right? So there's gonna be a pressure over here. There's gonna be a pressure over here. Well, if we want to speed this up, so we're going to increase the speed here, we want this to go faster, we want to accelerate it, there needs to be a greater push. The pressure this way needs to be greater, high pressure, there needs to be a higher pressure this way than going back this way. Otherwise, it would slow it down rather than speeding it up. If this was higher, it would actually slow that down. All right, so that's conceptually kind of what's going on here. Um, let's look at some kind of applications of this or you know where you might see this. Um, for example, let's take a, a house, okay? And let's say there's a big wind, right? So we have some wind out here, like in a hurricane, for example. Here's our wind like this, right? So we would say, okay, the velocity inside the house is basically zero. The velocity outside the house is fast, okay? I don't know how fast, maybe it's 50 meters per second moving outside. Well, since the velocity on the outside is going so fast, the pressure on the outside would be low. So you'd have a low pressure on the outside, you have a high pressure on the inside. And so what would actually happen is since there's higher pressure out here, there'd be a net push on the roof and on the walls of the house. And so during a hurricane, for example, um, you're worried about the inside of the house kind of pushing outward and expanding. And that's when like windows blow out, for example, it's not the, the wind pushing against the window and breaking it, it would be the inside pressure pushing out on the windows and breaking it. Let's look at another example. Uh, let's say a, a wing. How do wings work, an airplane wing? Well, if you look at an airplane wing, the shape of a wing looks, eh, it's not that great, but it's something like this where you have it kind of curved. Let me try to draw this better. It probably looks more like this, where there's kind of a curve on the top of the wing. All right, and so the reason for this is as the airplane's going, let's say the airplane's heading this way, right? You're gonna have kind of the air passing by it. And so you have, let's say, some air going across the top, some air going across the bottom. Well, in order to conserve mass, the air has to end up on the other side right has to take the same amount of time to reach the other side so for that to happen since this has to travel a greater distance right this is going up and around and this is going to go straight across since this has to tra travel a greater distance the velocity above should be higher than the velocity below so it's going to be moving faster across the top so um, therefore, the velocity is high across the top. This would then have a low pressure across the top and a high pressure along the bottom. And so you can see the net pressure then is going to be pushing upwards on the wing. 
and this would be uh, so this would be our net pressure pushing up high is going to push more than the low pushes down and so this is what we would call our lift of our airplane and that's going to allow the airplane to rise so actually let's do a little quick mathematical problem with this one so let's say in this example the the speed above is uh, we'll say it's 284 let's say the speed below is uh, 278 so notice this only has 6 meter per second differential. And let's just see what kind of pressure this is going to give to our wing. P pressure differential. Alright, so again we're going to use our Bernoulli equation. P1 plus rho g y1 plus 1 half rho v1 squared. Actually, I don't know why I'm writing this again. Here it is right up here. So anyway, in this problem, um, we look at our wing here basically the height above and the height below they're essentially the same so for our purposes we're just going to cancel that out and you're just going to be left with p1 plus one half row v1 equals p2 plus one half row v2 squared all right so that's going to be kind of our uh, our Bernoulli setup for this particular problem um, now what we're really looking for is what's the the difference in pressures in other words if we define this, let's define this as uh, our V1, and this is our V2 below it, okay? So the pressure above is going to be our P1, pressure below is going to be our P2 here. Um, so P1, so let's do above, so this would be P1 plus 1 half. Now you do need to know the density of air. See, I have this written down somewhere. It's like 1, basically. Uh, 1.29 so density for air equals 1.29 kilograms per kilograms meter cubed okay so we'll go ahead and put 1.29 times the velocity above we said was 284 squared equals p2 plus 1 half 1.29 and this was 278 squared Okay, now again, we're looking for the differential. So we're looking for uh, what? P2 minus P1. So there's more pressure below. So we want to know what's the net pressure, which would be P2 minus P1, that net upward pressure. Okay, and you just go ahead and subtract these out, right? So this would be this term minus this term. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. And so when you do that, you're going to get a differential of, it looks like, uh, 2175. 2175. And remember, this is Pascal's, or Newtons per meter squared. All right, so even with that small amount of velocity difference, uh, you get the kind of this large difference in pressure here. In fact, let's just take a wing, okay? Uh, I don't know how big these wings are. Let's make it simple. Let's say this is 25 meters and 4 meters. Okay, so the net area here would be 100 meters squared, right? Which means the amount of lift, if we want to find the lift force, we would go 2175 newtons per meter squared. Remember, this is equal to that times 100, which means you're getting about 200. Um, 17,500 newtons of upward lift and that's just with one wing right so if you had two wings you would go ahead and double that amount if your airplane goes faster you can create a greater pressure differential since the velocities would be greater um, or even if you just look at your airplane uh, if you put like a little flap in the back right if you raise this up then it's going to take even longer above to, to, re, to go around. And therefore, again, you'd have a greater velocity differential and therefore a greater pressure differential and therefore um, more lift. So let me just leave you with a couple conceptual questions to think about and then we'll discuss in class tomorrow. Uh, let's say you have um, a faucet Okay, and water is coming out of the faucet. And why don't you just simply do this experiment? Why don't you open up the faucet? One of the things you'll notice is that as the water falls, the stream 
is thinner. So this diameter here is going to be smaller than this diameter up here. Why is that? Why does the stream diameter decrease? So think about the physics of that and why that's happening. Okay, and the next thing I want you to think about is make a prediction. Let's say you have two soda cans attached to a string and you're going to blow air in between the soda cans. Okay, so I want you to predict what's going to happen to the soda cans. A, we'll just say nothing. B, let's say they move apart. Or C, they, let's say they move together. So make a prediction what's going to happen with this little demonstration. Um, and then obviously, why? Try to explain the physics of your analysis, of your reason.